Well, as though it's not already warm enough, a new groundbreaking report is predicting that hotter days and warmer nights will become the new normal by the end of the century. Plus, you can expect more extreme rainy days and even drier dry spells. Now, these are the most precise projections so far on what Singapore's weather could be like over the next eight decades. Teresa Tang takes us through the worst case scenarios. Picture this, a climate crystal ball revealing weather conditions 76 years from now. The Center for Climate Research Singapore has come up with the next best thing. Their latest study shows in remarkable detail what could happen here if the world fails to meet climate targets and keeps investing in fossil fuels. It could get a lot hotter and sooner than you think. Average annual temperatures in Singapore would climb about 5 degrees Celsius by end century at more than double the rate of increase from the past 40 years. This means it could get as hot as 36.7 degrees Celsius. The number of very hot days will go from an average of around 21 days a year to a whopping 351 days by end century. That's almost every day being a very hot day. And evenings won't bring much relief. Singapore is actually warming much faster at night. The study projects that by 2100, in the worst case scenario, every single night will be a warm night with a minimum of 26.3 degrees Celsius. It will also get wetter. Extreme rainfall would intensify across all seasons, even in the best case scenario. At the worst, annual average rainfall would hit more than 3,000 millimetres a year. That's around 500 millimetres more. Dry spells would become more frequent and last longer too, with Singapore averaging one dry spell every 10 months versus every few years. Near-surface wind speeds could increase by up to 20%, and this ups the risk of strong gusts wreaking havoc on buildings and roads, uprooting trees and injuring people, or worse. Singapore's sea level would go up by 1.15 metres by the end of the century and by 2.12 metres by 2150. And this is based on six tide gauges across the island. Sea levels at Sultan Shoal could rise the most. As for the rest of Southeast Asia, sea levels would rise by around 2 metres for most of these cities by the middle of next century. But Manila and Bangkok would have it a lot worse the Philippines' capital can expect nearly three metres more, while Bangkok could see closer to four metres. For the region, annual average temperatures would increase by up to 5.4 degrees Celsius by end century. Annual rainfall could go up 13.4 percent. Also expect stronger winds by up to 30 percent over the northern ASEAN region, Sumatra and Borneo. While these projections aren't good news... The hope is that, armed with such precise data, the region can better adapt and equip itself for what lies ahead. Describing the report as a benchmark for future climate projections, Sustainability and Environment Minister Grace Fu says it also puts decision makers on the same page with a common scientific basis to help inform climate policy and navigate challenges. BC shows that we will have to contend with more extreme climate conditions, high temperatures, heavier rainfalls, and longer and more frequent dry spells. These climate conditions may also lead to other indirect climate challenges, including disruptions to water and food. The Centre for Climate Research Singapore also hoping the findings can help guide policy. Singapore plans to share the data with neighbouring ASEAN countries. The report will serve as a basis for international negotiations at future UN climate change conferences. At least one climate expert says while the study does well with available data, more research is needed on the urban aspect. For instance, the urban heat island effect, you add in that model uh, parameterizations or simulations of buildings, of roads, of cars and so on and so forth, or waste heat from air conditioning, you will likely see changes in the temperature profiles at the surface relevant for people and for uh, infrastructure. That sort of improvement on that results will be critical towards decision makers, critical towards, uh, uh, you know, for teachers to inform them about the science of the heat island effect and for businesses as well.